Welcome again to Educator. Now that you've actually finished two short stories and you've got a lot of vocabulary under your belt, let's continue on with settings and themes in literature. So, for the lesson overview, we're going to be doing three things. We're going to be talking about what is a setting. And it turns out a setting is a little bit more than what you might think it is. Then we're going to give you examples of themes. And then what is a theme? And then we're going to spend the rest of the lesson learning how to recognize certain important themes in stories. So, let's go start right at the beginning. What's a setting? Well, a setting answers two questions. Where does a story take place? And when does a story take place? Those are the two basic questions for a story. So, in our short stories with the Velt, the story takes place in the happy life home sometime in the future. In the most dangerous game, the story takes place on an isolated island sometime in the early 1930s or late 1920s. But there are other questions that we have to ask about setting. Those two are important, but they're not enough. And here's why. Let's think about the social conditions of a story. Here's a quick example. If I wrote a story about the 1860s, well, that's when, and I said it's in the South, that's where, that's not sufficient for a setting, is it? Because if I told the story about, well, a family of slaves like in Roots, that's not going to be the same story as the story about a group of Southern aristocrats, and that in turn will not be the same setting as a group of soldiers fighting the Union. All one, two, and three here have dramatically different social conditions and thus a different setting, even though they take place in the same place and in the same time. So, let's go back to our stories. The Velt, what are the social conditions? Well, if they own a house that in today's dollars was worth about 300000 I'd say that they're probably upper middle class. Also, I say that they're like a nuclear family, which is just like the ideal in Leave it to Beaver. I mean, you have two parents living at home. You have two kids. You probably have a white picket fence. Um, maybe you're playing basketball. Uh, they didn't have a dog. I don't know why they don't have a dog. But they're trying to very much be the nuclear family. Now, I leave it to you, the reader, to judge whether they're successful at that. But you get the idea. Also this story assumes certain things about gender roles. You know, gender just means are you a man or a woman or a boy or a girl or, well, I could go on, but I won't. There's certain assumptions made about, well, what's a gender role? And you can kind of read through that story and figure out what that might be. Dangerous game. What are the social conditions here? Well, they might be far out from civilization, but they're still very wealthy safari gentlemen who know how to treat each other and know how to introduce themselves and give each other cocktails and nice food and compliments and talk about how great it is to be a hunter. General Zaroff gives orders. There's a military society going on here. Finally, I'd say that probably both these individuals, but especially General Zaroff, are both very powerful people. And so those are the social conditions in the most dangerous game. I mean, imagine how different the story had, would have been if the story had been about the previous people who crashed on the island, just a group of random poor sailors. That would be a very different story because the social conditions would have been different.